Barry Gordy established Motown in 1958. Now, have you ever wondered who was among the first artists he signed? Well, today's story is about one of those men, Marv Johnson. Now, since you made it this far, go ahead and leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and push that notification bell to stay up to date with the channel. Now, without further ado, let's cue that intro. Marvin Johnson was born in Detroit, Michigan on October 15, 1938. Johnson, like many other singers, grew up in church where he would fall in love with gospel and jazz music. But later in his life, he found himself singing doo-wop. While a teenager in the mid-50s, Johnson, he would join a local group called the Junior Serenaders. He would meet a young Barry Gordy while performing at a carnival. Gordy. He was just a songwriter with big dreams of owning his own record label at the time. He was blown away after he heard Johnson sing. He was so impressed that he introduced Johnson to his right hand man, William Robinson, aka Smokey. The three, they would hit it off right away, mainly because they all had big dreams of making it into the industry. Now according to the Jackie Wilson story, Gordy he would receive an $800 loan from a family member, which enabled Gordy to launch Motown. Motown was established on June 7, 1958. Robinson and the Miracles, along with Johnson, was among the first people Gordy signed. Johnson, he recorded the song Come To Me in February of 1959. Tama, aka Motown, they didn't have a distributor at the time. So Johnson, he would struck a deal with United Artists Records. The song was officially released in May of 1959. The song peaked at number 30 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts, number 6 on the Hot R&B single charts. Now, although Johnson signed to another label, the partnership between Johnson and Gordy was still ongoing. Johnson's debut album, Marvelous Marvin Johnson, was released in 1960. Johnson had a very successful run from 1960 to 1961. Now during this time period, he had eight singles that made the charts, including I'm Coming Home, which peaked at number 82 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts, and number 23 on the Hot R&B single charts. You Got What It Takes, that peaked at number 10 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts, and number two on the Hot R&B single charts. Also going number seven on the UK charts. I Love The Way You Love, that peaked at number nine on the Billboard Hot 100 charts, number two on the Hot R&B single charts, and number 35 on the UK charts. Ain't Gonna Be That Way, that peaked at number 74 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts. All The Love I Got, that peaked at number 63 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts. Move To Mountain, that peaked at number 20 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts, and number 12 on the Hot R&B single charts. Happy Days, that peaked at number 58 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts, and number seven on the Hot R&B single charts. And lastly, Merry Go Round, that peaked at number 61 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts and number 61 on the Hot R&B single charts. Johnson, he would leave United Artists Records in 1964 and resign to Motown after his chart success ended in late 1961. Why do you want to let me go with Johnson's first single that he released after joining Motown? Johnson returned to the US charts in April of 1966 with the release single, I Miss You Baby. This song had reached number 39 on the Billboard R&B charts. Now, despite the fact that most of his hits didn't do well in the United States, Johnson remained a very popular singer in the UK. Johnson began working as a songwriter for Motown during the 70s. He would write songs for artists such as Tyrone Davis and Johnny Taylor, as well as writing the Dell song, Give Your Baby a Standing Ovation. Johnson also worked in the sales and promotion department at Motown. Now Johnson would leave Motown and sign with Motor City Records in the UK where he would tour. On May 16, 1993, Johnson, he would pass away at the age of 54. 
Johnson was inducted into the Michigan Rock and Roll Legends Hall of Fame in 2015. Now Johnson, he was a multi-talented man who worked as an artist, salesman, songwriter, promotion manager, and sales director. Johnson is regarded as a Motown pioneer as he left an incredible imprint on Motown history.